Well, I, I, I just thought it, uh, there was kind of an unknown factor in, in the Jersey Boys uh, play, and nobody could figure out why it was such a success, you know, the play. And it had been so successful for nine years on Broadway and six years in London and various times. And, and uh, I always wondered why, I wondered after seeing it, why nobody had ever made it. But on the other hand, nobody could really put their finger on why it was such a hit. You know, audiences were giving it standing ovations and things and, and, uh, as, a, as a play. And, and um, there's something about that story. There's something about the fact that it's sort of undiscovered music and, uh, and undiscovered life uh, of these guys. They didn't discover, nobody discovered uh, that they had come from a, a background of, um, a, a background that's uh, possible leading towards juvenile delinquency and uh, and um, and they, they, they were trying to be singers in at the 40s uh, uh, New Jersey which was a kind of tough neighborhoods and the ideas of being singers and then singing falsetto at that uh, w was uh, not a thing to do. It was not like being on the football team or something, you know, or something, uh, being a sports, uh, and, uh, a person who excels in sports or something. So, and so then they become successful and then they become successful and, get, and it gets them out of trouble uh, with the help of gangsters and, and a lot of different elements. So it's, um, it's becomes a fascinating story and then the, everybody forgets about how good that music was. In a rock and roll era, where some of the music was pretty inane and, uh, and the uh, boy next door kind of uh, singers were, uh, were doing uh, well or getting hit records, maybe only one or two. And, but these guys did a whole string of records that made a lot of money. And they did some classic ones in, the, in, in there as well that become a classic, uh, that become a classic in any generation. I can't take my eyes off of you. You're too good to be true. That those lyrics uh, would have gone over in any generation, even the great Tin Pan Alley songs and uh, the Mercers and Gershwins and people uh, uh, couldn't do any better than that. And uh, so it was a it's a fascinating thing just to discover. Uh, to answer your question, uh, when I decided, I just decided I'd try it and take a swing at bat with it. I don't know uh, whether I knew the secret of it. All I know is I enjoyed it when I watched it, and I said, I'm just going to put it together and see if, if I enjoy it, then I hope somebody else might. I might have. Uh, I certainly... Uh, I might have, but I didn't. I mean, I was still in the 60s and stuff. I was still listening to uh, to Charlie Parker and Lester Young and, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, Art Tatum, Oscar Peterson, Dave Brubeck, all that crowd, and, I, and, I, uh, and that kind of music, which I still adore, but... Uh, uh, I've, I've branched out into other music in my life, and I've found out in the, uh, from being a, a, an actor and doing music plays that I've found values in music that I didn't care for when I was young, like country music. But I've but I realized, you know, through the years that there were some really great players and some really great um, uh, songs and in, in, uh, and lyrics and. Uh, in country music, and the only uh, the only music I haven't tried in, in yet in a in a film is classical, which I adore as well. So maybe I'll get a chance to do that someday. No, I don't think it's a musical. I I mean I think of it in terms of the story. 
I'd, I'd rather uh, approach it from the play and that story as a, a story ab about uh, these boys and, and, and it just happened to be music that they were doing. I mean, it could have been something else. It could have been uh, uh, tennis players or something like that and maybe they went on to become something. Uh, but, but the music was, was unique and some of the songs written by uh, Guardio and crew and other people uh, the, were uh, just very uh, infectious uh, at the time. And I think people forget, older people forget about the, the, how good they were and they re reintroduced to it. And younger people are introduced to it for the first time and think it's not, it's not so bad at t either, you know. Well, I, I wanted to, uh, for me, uh, uh, if a big star can, can come up, is, is out there who can uh, sing well, uh, play the story well, uh, that's one thing. But to me, uh, you have um, many f companies, uh, all the way from, from London to, uh, s to San Francisco, Chicago, New York, there's a lot of companies um, in Australia uh, uh, playing this um, this play, and so there's there's a tremendous amount of actors who are schooled up on this play, and there's really no reason why not to consider them. And I think a movie's success depends on how uh, is on the total ensemble, not uh, not based upon um, not based upon. Uh, uh, the name value from doing some other kind of movie. Uh, these actors, I think the public, I hope the public will agree, that these actors uh, are going to be tough to beat um, uh, if for bringing the thing alive. And, and Vince Piazza, who came, came in not being involved with the play, uh, Christopher Walken not being involved with the play, come in and they're, they're they both fit in uh, nicely and, and do a, a terrific job. And, um, but uh, no, I think the play is a star by itself and people have to discover that. And, um, and the public has, the public who has seen it has, now we, just, we have to just get to, to the movie public. And, um, uh, but, but just putting you know, names in a, in a play, uh, that's easy to do, but it's uh, not so easy to pull it off. It, it may lose its, it may have lost its, uh, the ensemble may not have come out the same. And these guys, I just had to make up what I thought was the proper uh, blend and just, uh, just amazingly based upon ability. Frankie Valley. Uh, uh, well, I've, I've uh, I had met him once, I think, years ago, uh, many years ago, and um, then we met uh, when I was doing the project. I had dinner with him one night, and um, with some uh, mutual friends, and they uh, and we talked about it, and uh, he talked about the play and this and that, and he gave me a little bit of the history of the whole thing, uh, his involvement anyway. And, uh, and then we talked nostalgically about the mu music of the 40s because uh, he was raised in that era as well and the big band era and uh, Ellington, uh, Stan Kenton, Woody Herman, Count Basie, you know, that era. And, uh, and then we talked about Sinatra who was also a New Jerseyite who, uh, uh, who grew up and what it must have been like to be him trying to be a singer uh, and, uh, and, uh, in, in New Jersey at that particular time in history. And um, it's, it's pretty big, it was a pretty big deal. Singers were not, uh, and to sing falsetto, like I mentioned earlier, was really a, a, a risky thing. If he hadn't had the gangster or the mobster uh, of 
Chip DiCarlo on his team, he might have been beaten up badly. <laughs> so uh, uh, that, that's one element, and uh, that um, is a lot of different characters come and go in the play that are uh, interesting, some of them tragically and some of them inspirational.